Hello my friends, how are you doing? It is time for some secret sauce and today I'm going to show you how to fix shiny skin. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So of course there's a lot of different reasons for shiny skin. Even if you're a really good photographer and there is makeup and perfect light, your model might just be a little bit stressed or it's a hot day or they have to work out in front of the camera. There's a lot of reasons why the skin gets a little bit sweaty. So you have shiny skin. but the good thing is in Affinity Photo, it's super easy to fix. You should watch the full video, by the way, because I show different ways how to fix it and how to make it actually really work for you. Okay, so the first thing is really easy. Open up the picture and then go to Filters and Frequency Separation. You, of course, want to first select the layer and then this actually works. Boom, there we go. So. On the left side, you can see the high frequencies, which is the smaller details. And on the right side, you can see all the rest, which is the lower frequencies, all the bigger parts, basically. You want to adjust the radius so you can see the picture fairly well on the left side here, and then click on apply. And this will create two layers for you. As you can see, they are called high frequency, low frequency, as I told you. Now. You want to create a new layer in the middle of that. And this is where you basically paint your digital makeup. This is how cool this is. So here is what you need to know to make this work. We have a 3D world, but this is a 2D picture. So the way how to understand the shape of the surface is light and shadow. So you need to understand where to pick the colors to actually keep that shape and not just paint on any kind of color that's there. So what we want to do is go over here, click on the upper circle because that's the main color. And then you have here the color picker click and drag this over to a medium lit area because we want to fix this nose ridge first where there's a lot of shiny um, skin on there. So click, drag, and I want to pick some color up here that is not shiny. So let's go for this area here. And then you can see this pick the color. You need to click on this again to activate it. And then the next thing we have to think about is our brush because we're going to paint this in here. So select your brush. I would suggest that you use a normal round brush over here, one of the basic brushes. And then you want to set it up, hardness zero. The opacity, I have it often very low so I can do multiple strokes to build up the color as I need it. And the size is based on your taste. Don't make it too big, don't make it too small. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to paint in here and you will see that this will greatly reduce our glare on the nose. But this is not the full effect that we are looking for. Because now you can see if I turn this on and off, you will see if we zoom out a little bit that the nose is flat on top. This is not a good look. This is not the effect we're looking for. And it has these white lines like train tracks left and right. So this is not good. And this is what I talked about before because we define what is flat and what is round by the light and the shadow. So as you can see, the left and right side of the nose in the natural picture have these darker values. You have to hide the layer. So make this invisible. So you have clean colors and then pick this area area where the shadow is and then click to activate that and then turn the layer back on and now you can paint on that. One advice I want to give you is to make it a little bit transparent so to reduce the opacity you can see what is underneath. Let's go to 50% here and now paint along the edges of the natural shadow like this a little bit on here. So you paint this in again. You can even pick new color over here. It's good when you do this effect to pick color often so you get the natural colors of this area. And now if we go back opacity 100%, you can see that we fixed it a little bit, but we can do better. So let's paint on this a little bit more over here and then pick some color over here from the shadow area, paint on that. And this already looks a lot rounder 
than before. Now, the thing here is, and you can see this right now, if you do the effect too much, and that's completely okay. If you want to have an artificial look in your picture, go for that. In some pictures, some artists, they like this kind of very artificial kind of robotic look. That is also good if you want that, if you search for that. But if you don't want to have that, I would suggest that you reduce the opacity. As you can see here, I can go from no makeup, which is 0% opacity, to the full makeup we applied before. And I would select something in the middle or maybe, maybe a little bit higher that looks natural. So for example, here, in this case, 62%, you can see we reduced a lot of glare, but there is still a little bit there that looks natural because we need it in there because this is what gives our eye the understanding, oh, there is the nose. Knows. And also another important part here is from your artistic point of view, you want to make sure that the digital makeup that you apply to the picture fits to the rest of the makeup, the rest of the face of the model. And in this case, you can see the makeup is a little bit of a bronze kind of makeup. So there has to be a little bit of shine in there. That's important and not everything completely reduced. So this is actually a pretty good look. Now here is another thing you want to look out for that's really important to make this work too. So for example, here on the cheeks, we also have a little bit too much shine on the skin and maybe we want to remove that too. So the thing here is that you can see when you look at the skin, it has these dark how are they called little folds little areas and this can be a problem because if you now change the look of the surrounding areas these will look like holes i will show you so i would also suggest here's the next part the extra trick that's important make different layers from different areas or better say four different areas because then you can turn them on and off and you can adjust the opacity by taste for the different areas. It's really important because different areas need a different kind of treatment, different kind of look. All right, so let's go in here, have a look what we want to do here, make a new layer for that area. You can also name them. As you can see, this is the nose area. And this, for example, is the cheek area. And you can also go left cheek, right cheek. You can go as detailed as you want, really up to. You can sink a lot of time into that, to be honest. Okay, so let's go here and pick some of that color down here. It's maybe a little bit too dark. Let's go over here. That looks pretty good. All right. And then we want to paint on that a little bit to reduce that. Let's uh, make my brush a bit bigger, maybe. Yes, that looks good. I want to reduce the opacity a bit more and then I just want to paint on this area a bit more and you can see immediately how these holes now are springing up getting really aggressive in their look doesn't look good right it looks like a little bit like a skin sickness so that is not a good look this is not what we want to have how do you fix this? Well, there's an easy fix, luckily for us. You want to make now another layer on top of the high frequency. So let's make this here and we can call this cheek dark parts. So we know what this is about. And now you can take actually the same color if you want to, and you want to paint on this. We can also keep the same settings and paint on the areas that are affected like so you can see that this reduces the effect and this might be a little bit too strong because we're not done yet there's another step we have to take and that step is that you now go to the blend ranges and on the left side where it says source layer range you want to apply this mainly to the dark areas not to the bright areas so pull this down here on that area so it's not in the bright areas and then click to unhook linear and make a point here in the middle and now you can move that around you can see this will give you a curve and here you can really design on your taste what kind of look you want to have, how much of the dark areas, how much of the bright areas you want to effect. And now I can see if I turn this on and off that this has a really big impact on how the end result looks. And again, if we zoom out here, 
What we also want to do is to adjust the opacity of both effects. So maybe reduce this a little bit to 75% and then we can also adjust this a little bit maybe also to 70, something like that. And by the way, if you have some outlines here, if there's a little bit of problem here, you can do a little bit of a trick to smooth it out a bit. Also, when you paint on it and you have like areas in there that kind of stand out, just go here to layer effects and then you can go to Gaussian blur a little bit. You have to look at the picture and see how it looks if the effect is still there, if it's not removed by the blur and just adapt it a little bit. And just like that, you can really change the look of the picture and remove the glare to a degree that makes sense for the picture. So let's um, select all these layers here and turn them off. So this is before and this is after. So you can see we had a major impact and we fixed some of these areas. This of course really depends on your taste and what you want to do. And as you can see, you can sink a lot of time into getting this right and perfecting it, but don't go too perfect, keep it natural. Okay, that's it for today. If you want, join my Facebook group where there's over 1,700 other amazing photographers and photo editors. And I have a newsletter that's also very popular where I send out new information and updates about my channel and what's going on in the community and about my live stream and all the other things I'm doing every two weeks. So you're not getting bombarded by emails only every two weeks. Thank you very much. See you soon. Have a nice day. Bye.